What's up guys, welcome back to the video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a subject that may be able to help you out a lot in the long run as you're working with churches as your client, or if you're just working and volunteering in your home church as a content creator. Social Vibe here to help you out with all your coffee, tech, and social media needs. My name is Joe Klein, and since I was about 14 years old, I've worked with many different churches, whether that's on a church by church cases, or whether that's working with an entire organization. Throughout all of those years as I've worked with churches, I've ran into so many different issues as I've switched between volunteer work to clientele work, as I've switched content creation from something that I do for fun into my full time profession. Now with that being said, my hope in this video is to help you guys kind of figure out where to draw the lines on where you're going to be creating content for a church professionally or whether you're going to be doing that as a volunteer service. Now with that being said, this video is primarily going to be for people who do content creation as a full time thing like this is your career, this is what you're trying to do with your life and that's important to say because if you're just kind of dabbling in it, um, some of these things may not apply to you, but it still may be helpful for you. So continue listening and I hope it does bring you some value. Above everything that I'm about to say and above money, listen to God. Don't just run for the next gig that's gonna make you the most money because you may actually end up not fulfilling your purpose that you planned out to do. And I know that I have found myself in that situation so many times in my life. Uh, really honestly to the point to where I kind of really got deep and dark and depressed because I was making all the money working with different churches and fulfilling needs however I was not fulfilling my calling of what I felt like I should be accomplishing if that makes sense so today as I was driving I actually was listening to a Justin Bieber song and so I wanted to really read those lyrics to you um, because it's very similar to what I was talking about the song is called we're in this together and the lyrics are I've had everything in life that people strive for just to ask the question, what are we alive for? That's so crazy. So you have this young guy, um, not much older than me, who says that he's had a lot. You know, he was a millionaire by 17 years old, but he's still asking the question, what do we live? What are we alive for? And so that just tells you, you know, you can accomplish goals. You can accomplish all these different things. You can make all the money, but still you may not fulfill that thing that you are setting out to fulfill in your life if you're not being careful and listening to God throughout the process. So with that out of the way, we're now going to jump in and talk about three different scenarios that you may find yourself in whenever you're working with a church as a content creator. So first, let's say that you're a member of the church and you're actually using your own gear to provide a service or provide value for the church and you're doing that in a content creation way. So there are a few questions that you may have if you find yourself in that boat. One, should you charge them? Two, what should you charge them? I'm gonna break this down for you and let you guys decide on those questions and let you answer them for yourselves. So I'm gonna do that by first, we need to talk about the value that the church is providing you. Now this is very important and when I say value, I don't just mean monetarily. There are so many different ways that you can provide value for someone and there's so many different ways that a church can provide value for you specifically. Whether that's through relationships and you get access to someone to talk to or a community of people who actually care for you, who actually love you, like that's super valuable, especially in this year that we've been through where people have been extremely isolated having such a big group of people to talk to throughout this and who care for you and you know someone's thinking about you like th that's so valuable um, maybe even priceless you may say and so that is something to take into consideration now I don't only mean relational maybe they have taught you and got you to the place of where you are now as a content creator. So maybe they provided some video skills, maybe they started you off working on a Sunday service, on a cameras, and you kinda really loved that and then they begin to develop those skills. That's valuable. People go to college and pay for that type of experience. And so you're getting that for free in a church that's absolutely an asset to you and an asset to your life overall. So those are things that to take into value when I'm talking about uh, trying to figure out the value that the church is providing you. 
Now, the last thing that I want to say about the value is that maybe you're working with them and you've been working with this gear over years that belongs to them and now you're saying, hey, I want this gear and they're like, hey, I can give you this gear, just continue to serve with the, all, you know, whatever way that you can think of that qualifies as value. Write that down, not for them, for you to see so that you can decide the next few steps. Before I move on to the next one, I actually want to say this again because I can't stress it enough. You always, before everything I say, you want to take it through the filter of what has God said. Um, because if God has told you not to charge them, then you don't need to charge them. You have no idea what God may have for you down the line. Maybe this church is about to blow up in a huge way. And they're going to hire you on as their full-time content creator if you just continue to be faithful and continue to help them grow. And you could be making $100,000 compared to if you're trying to force you know, some money to move around into your pockets and you were only making 50 bucks an hour like that's still a lot of money but still that's not compared to all the benefits and the value that you could have if you just listen to God and follow his steps so I'm not gonna include that as a step because again I just want to keep uh, iterating that however you say that word um, just to make sure that you guys are taking that into consideration whenever I'm talking throughout this video so the next thing is should you charge them if you're a member of the church and you're bringing your own gear and you're providing them value the answer is yes you should definitely charge them if they have if you have time to be there then you need to be compensated in some way or form now you can talk to again what the value looks like for you but um, I'm talking specifically monetary you should be getting paid the reason for that is because for the most part you probably paid for your gear I know for me I've paid for my own gear and to be honest with you, my gear, um, a lot of times that I run around with with my Ronin and my camera, it's over $3,000. And so bringing that gear out for free and putting, you know, that wear and tear on a camera, that's a lot to do for someone for free. Unless you hear from God that you shouldn't charge them, specifically you hear from God, not someone else, not the pastor heard from God, nothing weird like that. If you've heard from God that you should provide this value to them for free, then absolutely, by no means, don't hold out. Go do that. But otherwise, you should definitely charge them for your service. All right, so now we are down to scenario two um, out of three. Let's say that you're a member of the church and you're using their gear to provide them value or service. Now, there's a really tough and difficult gray area right here because it comes down to like if you're a part of the church you want to be serving you want to be helping and let me tell you this there's a big difference between volunteering and providing someone a service so this is how i would do it and this is what i recommend that you do so i would say up front before you really even start doing too much that you feel like you're getting stressed out and you get upset first off decide how much time that you have to give for free as volunteer hours to serve in the church decide that up front so let's say you have two hours a week to give as free volunteer you are sewing into the house that you are a part of so you say that you say hey i have two hours to give to you as volunteer time outside of that uh, I am I'm a full-time creator like this is what I do for a living so if you have me here outside of those hours that means that I'm not making money in this area of my life so would you please compensate me for that so that my bills can get paid so that I can stay healthy mentally physically so that my family can be okay so that, that is so important and for most people that's the conversation that they don't want to have um, to be honest with you that's a conversation that I have not had with people so many times in these type of scenarios and it's made so much frustration between both parties because there's so many so many misunderstandings when you show up to an event you think you're going to get paid because you're maybe using your gear or you're using their gear and then you do the event and then you come to find out you don't get paid you have to communicate and that's what i'm talking about it's all about communication here and if you don't communicate you're going to get burnt out you're going to get upset and you're going to feel like you're getting taken advantage of and you very may be getting taken advantage of i've also been taken advantage of many times in churches so make sure that you're communicating so that that does not happen so now with that being said 
you now have your, I think I said three hours that, or two hours that you're serving as volunteer hours. Now you're saying, hey, I'm gonna be charging you um, outside of that. So what should you charge? That's the question that a lot of people have. Now for you in this video, I'm actually gonna save that to the end of this video. So stick through so you can hear about my prices that I usually charge when I work with the church. And it all depends on your area and where you are. I am in a DFW area where people tend to have a little bit more money and so my prices may be a little bit higher or way lower uh, compared to maybe somebody in like LA doing stuff like this for churches I don't know but stick through to the end and we're gonna talk about that and for the third scenario we're gonna be talking about if you are a person who is not a member or connected to a church at all and you're providing them a service how does that work now for me I personally treat that like a regular client a regular relationship for me whenever I'm working with churches just churches uh, if they're one of those people who fit into the last scenario I charge them 50 bucks an hour I feel like that's not terrible so feature Joe here I just want to bring a little clarity to what I meant um, so when I'm working with churches, that is the price I charge only for churches overall. So I usually don't go over that price for churches. Um, now if we're talking commercial clients, I mean, I'm definitely in the thousands, um, per gig. I'm charging them per gig, not per hour, um, because I would not make as much money and I would be working harder in those hours than I would be if I was working. I, I just wouldn't get paid the right amount of money that I needed to get paid if I'm going by hourly. So I just wanted to clarify that. That being said, back to the video. Um, because I am a very quick editor and honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm not even charging enough. Usually I say if I'm gonna go over two hours of editing, I'm gonna stop there. So you're only gonna pay for what, $100 of editing? Cause I, I edit very, very quick. Um, now I know that I don't charge as much as I probably should. I don't know. I'm just comfortable charging that much. Now, if it's for my local church, I'm gonna cut that price in half and I'm gonna charge them half of what I charge everyone else. Now, with that being said, I also limit the amount of projects that I'm willing to take on from my church that I serve in. The reason for that is because if I'm gonna give them 50% off of what I regularly charge someone else, um, and I'm doing projects like that all week, then that means that I'm not making the income that I need to make to be able to give them that price that I'm giving them. So you have to make sure that you're balancing it out well. I typically will do maybe two projects like that with them for uh, over a month's time. Um, and the rest of it, I'm doing like commercial client work or I'm covering that additional cost in some other way or form. I really do hope this video helps you to not find yourself in very difficult situations like I found myself in even recently. Um, so make sure that you're having those conversations up front. Make sure that you're hearing from God what you should do, the way that you should charge and all those different things. If you guys want kind of a one-on-one -on -one conversation and you have some more personal questions, maybe what should I charge this specific person? This is the value that they've charged me. Can you help me get a price? Go over to my Instagram, DM me, and I'm definitely willing to check out your work, see you know the type of quality that you do and help you figure out a price for your clients. With that being said, Thank you guys for checking out this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.